Well yesterday we saw northern marsh orchid, Dactylorhiza purpurella, and I said that we would see another orchid which looked pretty much like it, and here it is. This is Dactylorhiza incarnata, the early marsh orchid. It's not actually very much earlier than Dactylorhiza purpurella, northern marsh, but it looks quite different as you can see. Um, the colour, well, it's very variable in colour. This is a typical one, which is often described as dead flesh, which actually is quite a good way of putting it, I think. Um, they also come in brick red and uh, bright purple, rather like purpurella. So um, you have to be careful with the colour, but you can usually find some which uh, look as though uh, they ought to be on a mortuary slab somewhere. And if you look at the, um, the little flowers, the individual flowers, you'll see they're quite a different shape. And the, the sides of the, the bottom lip are turned back, which gives it quite a narrow appearance. Um, and if I feel the, the leaves, they're, they're unspotted, just like um, the northern marsh orchid, but they're hooded at the end, and I can feel that between my fingers. So this is um, the same genus, it's Dactylorhiza, and you'll remember what I told you about fingers, but this is Dactylorhiza incarnata, the early marsh orchid, and taxonomists have decided that the different colours are in fact represent different subspecies, and so this is the nominate subspecies, Dactylorhiza incarnata subspecies incarnata. The others, the purple ones and the red ones, have different names. And sometimes you can find all three growing together. And there is a rare one that only occurs in, uh, in some fens in Cambridgeshire too. So um, it's quite worth looking out and see some uh, early marsh orchids. It's quite lo worth looking out to see what colour uh, variations you can find. A nice plant, a nice plant to see, and not too common where we are in Northumberland.